You and I have a common enemy. He shows up uninvited anywhere, anytime. Doesn't care if you're a rookie or a road dog with 30 years behind the board. He doesn't care if you're a musician, a tech, or just reading announcements at your kid's school play. He thrives in chaos, feeds on bad mic placement, poor game structure, and your panic. And worst of all, you don't even know he's there until it's too late. His name? The pronunciation sounds a little bit like this. But most of us call him Feedback. In this video, you will learn how to find and kill Feedback before it kills your mix. Welcome to Mixing Pixels, where we teach audio through video. We've all met Feedback before. It doesn't matter if you're in a world-class concert hall, a church sanctuary, or your niece's school play. That high-pitched squeal? That's him making a grand entrance. Hollywood usually uses it to get what? Attention. Or to convey the message that the person in front of the mic doesn't know how or is not used to talking in front of people. But the reality is that there is no better buzz killer or party pooper Do people still say party pooper? than this horrendous noise. That's why we call it an enemy. I know that you're here to know how to get rid of feedback, and you will. But before, you need to understand that to defeat an enemy, you have to know it. Technically, feedback is this, a screeching or humming sound caused by a loop between an input and an output, like a mic picking up its own signal from the speaker. In normal terms, sound goes into a microphone. The microphone takes that sound to the mixer. The mixer takes it to the speakers. Part of that sound goes from the speakers to the microphone, creating the loop. The result of that loop is feedback. I know, I know, it's way more complicated than that, but you get the point. But why does this happen? This is what I ask myself during a gig. In those seconds when time seems to stand still, Feedback is piercing everyone's ears, and I'm there trying to find every fader, every knob, and move it like a crazy person. Here's some reasons why feedback happens. One, your input gain is set too high. Two, your singer or singers are way too close to a floor monitor. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate floor monitors? Three, your singer loves to walk in front of the PA. This is very common in show bands where the singer likes to get off stage and go dance with the people. Now, while there is nothing wrong with that, you need to do this with caution, making sure you don't end up in front of a speaker with a hot mic, because feedback will present itself very quickly. If you're one of these people, please repeat with me. I cannot defy the laws of physics. Come on, say it. I'm waiting. Four, you're playing loud shows, nothing wrong with that, in small venues. Something will trigger a feedback, whether that is a guitar harmonic, a cymbal hit, or a hi-hat hit, something will trigger it. Five, you are using the wrong mic. If you're playing small to mid-sized gigs and you give your singer a condenser omnidirectional microphone, you are welcoming feedback to your doorstep. So when choosing a microphone for your singer, keep in mind the kind of microphone, condenser or dynamic, and also the polar pattern, how it picks up the signal. It's not only important how the microphone picks up the signal, but how it rejects other sound sources. But this is material for another video. There are way more reasons why feedback happens, but Let's go to the part where you actually learn how to find it and how to get rid of it. And for that, we're going to bring our great friend, the Audio Spectrum Analyzer. If you're familiar with it, great. If not, let me explain. The Audio Spectrum Analyzer is a graphical representation of all the frequencies that humans can hear. It uses numbers. From 20 to 1000, we call them Hertz, and from 1,000 to 20,000, we call them kilohertz. Why is this important to know? Because every feedback that you have ever heard in your entire life 
can be located somewhere in the audio spectrum analyzer. All of them. The arrival of digital mixers helped us to see how sound behaves inside the audio spectrum analyzer, including feedback. But before we go into a digital mixer, let's see if we can really find any feedback in the audio spectrum analyzer using a digital audio workstation such as Logic Pro. So here on the screen, I have a feedback sound and I have it looped. And we're going to see where, if we can find that feedback in the audio spectrum analyzer. So anywhere between 20 and 20K. Let's see. I'm going to play it. Did you see that? So right here, right before 6K, that's where we have our feedback. There's other sounds there, but I want you to focus on that. Right there it is. So let's use another example. I'm going to play another kind of feedback and we're going to see if we can find it. So this is the second kind of feedback. Let's see if we can find it anywhere in the audio spectrum analyzer. See, this one is a little bit lower. Is it around? Oh, you can see it there. Right before 4K. Very prominent because we're looping. Again, we're getting all kinds of sound, but if you focus on the feedback sound, it's right there, right before 4K. Okay, let's use another example. This is gonna be a different kind of feedback, and we will see if we can find it in the auto spectrum analyzer. Here we go. Ooh, that one is killer. You see it right there on 8K? Right there. The, there's other sounds. There's one poking at 10K. But you can find it there. Sometimes feedbacks attack you several other times, so you got to be ready for this as well. Do you get the point now? Every feedback is somewhere here in the audio spectrum analyzer. This is like a master plan of where your enemy is attacking you so that you can counterattack. But in the real world, we're not inside a digital audio workstation. We are in different kinds of rooms and venues every weekend, and they are all different. What you need to know is this. If a feedback is ringing at 500 hertz, that means that particular room has too much of 500 hertz. Too much that it ends up looping from mic to mixer to speakers back to mic and so on. So you need to take away sound from that place, from those frequencies, so that the room is balanced. Keep that in mind, because now we're going to apply that concept in a live setting with a digital mixer. Let's go. Here we are using a floor monitor. Have I said before how much I hate floor monitors? And what we're going to do is the following, step by step. First, we're going to open the mic and see how it behaves. Second, you will hear feedback at some point. Third, we will check the audio spectrum analyzer and we'll find that feedback. And fourth, we will get rid of that feedback.
So did you see that? There was feedback in different parts of the audio spectrum analyzer. And sometimes when you get rid of one, another one shows up. And sometimes you're attacked by several at the same time. The game changer is to learn how to find those frequencies and cut in them. I know that it sounds simple and very intuitive, but a lot of people are so deep in panic that they cannot bring themselves to find those frequencies and to cut them. Let me say it again. The game changer is to learn how to find quickly those frequencies and to cut them. Now, here are some things that you need to keep in mind when you're cutting feedback. Like I said before, every room is different. In some rooms, some frequencies are more pronounced than other frequencies. So you need to EQ or cut accordingly. Some people do the cutting or the EQing right on the channel, like for example, on a singer's channel. Other people do it on the mains, on the left and right. I do it mainly on the left and right, just in case another instrument triggers or excites that frequency in the room. And if the feedback persists, then I go to the channel, for example, a singer's channel, and I do some more adjustments. When you do your EQing or cutting, make sure that you use a narrow standard paramedic EQ. On the X32 and M32 environment, it's called PEQ. This way, you're surgically removing feedback without affecting other frequencies that you need in the room. If you cut too much, your mix might get muddy and lifeless. Don't overdo it when you're cutting feedback frequencies. Start by cutting 2 to 3 dBs. If it persists, then cut 6 dBs. And if it's still there, then cut some more until you get rid of it. What we're trying to do is to kill feedback, but also to leave in place frequencies that you need in the room. If it's not affecting you, then you shouldn't cut it. You can apply this concept to PA and also to floor monitors. Have I said before how much I hate floor monitors? In general, you will find lower frequency feedback in PA and higher frequency feedback on floor monitors. It's just the nature and the size of the speakers. And before you apply any of this, make sure that you set your gain structure right, use the right microphone for the job, or at least know your mic. If it says that it has a boost in one kilohertz, then you already know that you need to watch for this in the rooms where 1K is very pronounced. Position floor monitors in a way that the microphone can reject its sound. And please, please, don't think you can break the laws of physics. Singers, don't position yourselves in front of floor monitors or in front of the PA. You're making the sound engineer's job much, much harder. Communicate with your sound engineer and come up with hot zones and safe zones and stick to them. So now we know that feedback is not magic or bad juju, it's physics. Learn where it can come from so that you can spot it and eliminate it quickly and effectively. Do you know any other ways to get rid of feedback? And if you've never tried this before, why not give it a go at your next gig? Let us know in the comments how it went. And remember, great sound is always within your reach.